first off, important to note that there was a big movement uh, at the end of January, 1st of February for military licensure portability. This was a uh, hard fought effort by many organized groups who were trying to help and represent military uh, licensees and their spouses. It really was more for their spouses as they get moved from state to state and different locations, they were running into unique challenges of trying to recredential and licensure in each state. So it opened up portability for those spouses specifically to be able to move from state to state. And as long as they're in license and good standing, no outstanding malpractice claims or, or litigation issues, and they have a valid uh, licensure packet, if you will, then they're able to move from state to state and pick up, get a new license in that state and be able to practice. So that's huge for those spouses who, who are supporting our military men and women uh, to be able to travel and move along as a family unit and be able to pick up where they left off with the license that they have paid dearly for in time and expertise. So that's good. There's actually a big movement for licensure portability as a collective group. This would not only apply to spouses, but also apply to all dentists to be able to move from state to state. So I think we're going to continue to see some opening up of that as well to allow dentists who are in good standing to be able to have a little bit more flexibility to move amongst the uh, 50 U.S. states uh, without major issues or having to relicensure, go through examination processes, etc. So we'll continue to stay on top of that. But I know that that is definitely currently being discussed. <clears throat> Another interesting piece that this really applies specifically to dentists in Oklahoma, but collectively as a group, we really should be watching this particular legislation. So forgive me while I pull up uh, some details of it, because I want to represent it very clearly. But Oklahoma is proposing a piece of a change, language change in their laws for dentists. And I think it's worth noting the beginning on May 1st of 2025, they're proposing that dentists who are placing implants must have an implant designation included on their license. So between July 1st of 23, which is just a few months from now, and May 1st of 25, every dentist shall provide the following, a proof of minimum of 80 hours of continuing education or a certification program to place implants. Now, specialists like oral maxillofacial surgeons, prosthodontists, and, and endodontists, oddly, are exempted from this particular requirement, and they must continue to maintain current certification in either the American Academy of Implant Dentistry or the American Board of Oral Implantology, and that they must meet these educational requirements beginning as of July 1st of 2023. Now, this is obviously something we should be watching very closely because anytime there is language that starts to restrict how general dentists can practice and also starts to narrow in scopes of practice, it's definitely worth discussing. Now, I know we have specialists who watch as well. Many of the specialists that I work with are incredibly supportive of GPs doing cases within their scope of practice. And in fact, in some ways, it alleviates the burden of them doing some of the more simple mundane uh, root canals, implant dentistry, et cetera, and allows them to really focus on their specialty of the more complex procedures. We could probably have a pretty heated debate on how everyone feels about that. But I think it's, it's worth noting that states are starting to look at specific language and a la carte different procedures and putting paradigms and restrictions around those procedures. So will this apply to endo? Will it apply to other facets of oral surgery? Will it apply to orthodontics? Will it apply to any other subspecialty that you practice in your, that you provide services in your practice? So we'll stay tuned to that. I think this will become something that becomes, that will start moving into the lobbying um, an activity space for organized dentists, particularly the Academy of General Dentistry, who seems to be very motivated to continue to protect the scope of practice for general dentists. Maybe that's a plug for renewing your membership. Lastly, very interesting story. Uh, there was a, a tomb that was uncovered, a 17th century aristocrat, very wealthy female she was buried and embalmed in a lead lined tomb. And so that meant that her uh, teeth were actually in pristine condition when they uncovered it. 
And interesting enough, interestingly enough, her skull reveals pretty aggressive acute periodontitis. So many of her roots are almost without bone uh, coverage at all. But she had cleverly designed a gold braided wire to help ligate her teeth together and hold them in position. So even as early as the 1600s, folks were starting to lean in on the wiring of teeth in order to fixate them into position. And in her case, keep them in her head.